sports fan, it is your host, Kareem, back here for SportsRecall.com. And today, for Raider Nation and all you NFL football fans out there, we got the Oakland Raiders' very own Donald Penn. He's going to be sitting down, talking to us about football, his foundation, and a few other things about life. So let's go inside and check it out. All right, everybody, welcome back to Sports Recall. Today we are back here in Tarzana sitting with Donald Penn from the Oakland Raiders. Thanks for coming out, taking a little time to hang with us. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. Oh, no doubt. Now, you're going to be meeting some fans, signing some autographs, raising some money from your foundation today, correct? Yeah, yeah. I got a um, Donald Penn Foundation, and, uh, you know, we do a lot of things in the community. One, one of the big things we do, we do a football camp uh, every year at my high school, St. Bernard's High School, and it's uh, free to as many kids uh that want to come and you know every year is grown and grown you know last year we had over 500 kids and this year we're looking to exceed that number then i do a i do a back to school drive and i do a christmas um uh, i take some kids uh, on a shopping spree for christmas underprivileged kids i do that i didn't do it last year because i was new to oakland but i'm picking it back up this year okay so some stuff that uh, a lot of kids in oakland will be able to look forward to this holiday season yeah yeah i'm looking forward to uh, bringing it to oakland because i didn't do it last year we we're just getting the feel for it but we're definitely um doing it again this year and it's nice to hear, I mean, you said not just a football camp, but this is free of charge. Parents don't have to worry about uh, putting money up or, or getting a bill in the mail from you guys. Oh, no, not at all. It's free of charge. You know, they get a free T-shirt, uh, they get free meal. And, uh, you know, last year I had about 15 and 20 uh, other fellow NFL guys there, along with other, like, high school coaches, you know, coaching. So we, we make it fun. Definitely. Um, not very many kids can say, I mean, not just, you know, you, but if you got some other guys in the NFL, I'm sure probably all different positions coming, sharing that knowledge that you guys have, uh, you know, how could the kids not learn from it? No, that's a real good thing. It's a real good thing. You know, me growing up, I never had anything like that. You know, I remember my mom used to bust her butt to get me to go to the UCLA and USC camp. You know, I had to work her tail off to get money. But, you know, these kids get to come for free and, and learn from, you know, NFL guys and other coaches throughout the um, high school area, too. Okay, and I'm glad you mentioned that because we can talk about that a little bit. Growing up, you grew up in L.A., went to St. Bernard High School. Um, but even before that, like, you know, when you said you were just trying to get into camps, trying to learn, did you really know that football was going to be for you? Were you just playing all types of sports? Nah, you know, I didn't, I, football, I didn't start playing football to sophomore year of high school. I, was, I thought I was going to be in the NBA growing up. You know, I was a big, uh, big in basketball, you know, growing up. I played basketball in high school too, but I was – really big in basketball. My dad played basketball, and, uh, you know, something that was in me. And, you know, I, I think basketball is what's helped me be such a great football player, you know, my basketball background, you know, with my footwork and everything, being a left tackle. But, you know, it wasn't until about junior, senior year where I really thought I could make something happen with football. Okay. Now, for a lot of people, whether they know or don't know, that's really kind of what they call a late bloomer or a late start. you really putting on pads and a helmet for the first time. Were you scared? Were you excited about it? It was crazy. I remember. The first, I still remember the first time I had to go out to practice. I had to have somebody help me because I didn't know how to get the pads in the um, pants, and I didn't know how to put my shoulder pads on. I had to have somebody help me. My helmet was real loose and stuff, but you know, I caught on quick. You know, I think that's one thing that helped. You know, I'm a quick learner, and um, I caught on quick. And you know, I, I was really developing fast. I didn't know how good I was, and you know, I just started getting better and better every year. Then you know, after my junior year, I really started focusing. On football, you know, I was still playing basketball, but my main focus was football. And I mean, I can't, I can't say anything else, man. It worked out. It worked out well. Right. Well, eventually, obviously, you had some colleges come. Must have started taking a look at you. Started recruiting. Ended up. Yeah, yeah. I had. That's what really how how I started. You know, after my junior year, I started uh, getting letters and stuff. And you know, I wasn't getting letters in, in basketball. You know, I was getting a lot of letters in football. You know, I had a lot of schools coming. So. You know, sitting there and, you know, talk to my mom. My mom, you know, she paid for my, my sister's college. So she told me, you know, if I didn't get a scholarship, man, I, was, I, I wasn't going to college. Unless, um, I was going to go to JC or something. So I had to get a scholarship. That was a little bit of motivation too. Okay, no, if you, you want to get to college, you really had to start balling out there on the, on the gridiron and uh, start tackling some fools. Yeah, you know, it, it was fun, man. I had, um, I had a great high school coach, you know, that really uh, took me under his wing and um, taught me a lot. And it really paid off. You know, the hard work paid off. And me still playing basketball, I think that really helped too. Okay. Now, as far as recruiting goes, you ended up at Utah State, correct? Yeah, yeah. It was it was a crazy recruiting process, man. Um, you know, I committed early in my senior year to uh, University of Arizona. And they fired their coach at the end of the year. And the new coach, he didn't want me. You know, he wanted to go get his own player. So, at that point, went to me school still around because I told him I already committed. But, you know, I had a couple other schools and, 
You know, I wouldn't change Utah for anything, man. It worked out well. I did five years out there, five years of my life. I learned a lot, you know, and um, you know, a lot of people, L.A. kid going to Utah was a real, real, real different, real, real shock. But, you know, I knew what the bigger picture was, and I just kept focusing and, and playing. I had a lot of ups and downs there, and, you know, I grew a lot as a person, and I matured a lot. Now, looking back on it, you know, a lot of times I'm imagining you're 17, 18 year old kid. You're getting ready to go to Arizona. You know, you might even have some wildcat gear in the house and the coach gets fired and the new coach is saying, sorry, I don't have a spot for you on the squad. That would crush a lot of people. I mean, especially just being a teenager, but maybe ended up being a a blessing in disguise for you. Oh, it definitely was a blessing in disguise because, you know, the bad thing was, you know, all the other schools that recruited me throughout the rest of my senior year. You know, I was telling them I was committed. I was already verbally committed. So, you know, they backed out. So when they did tell me that, it was kind of it was kind of tough because a lot of schools already had their guys. You know, I had a couple of schools. Like I had Oregon and, you know, New Mexico and Northern Arizona. I was really going to go to Oregon, but um, they had to gray shirt me. And my mom didn't. That means you got to pay for your first semester, and they pick up my scholarship second semester. We already know how mom felt about paying for that tuition. <laughs> well, she tried, but we, we got the, she got denied on a loan. So I had to go somewhere where it was – where it was going to be set in Utah State, you know, they, they promised me if I came in there and worked hard, you know, I would have a, a shot at starting, you know, after my red shirt freshman year. And at the end of the day, that's what happened. Now, like you said, kid growing up in L.A., you're out in Utah, two totally different environments, but it, it was a good experience for you. Anything that you can remember, just kind of a, a life lesson or something that sticks out when you think about your time back there and just kind of maturing into the person you are today? Um, I mean, I remember I was a little shell shocked because I came home first year. I came home for Christmas break. And when I went back out there, it was snow everywhere, and that was like only my second time in snow. I mean, that was like a, a real shell shock dealing with the cold and getting used to that. But you know, I built a lot of good friends there, and you know, I still a lot of friends I still talk to today. You know, I got built a lot of great relationships there, and uh, like I said, me being out there, focusing and being away from LA, it really got me got me to really just focus on football and school, you know, and it it turned out well. Now, not saying we don't have to name any names, but, you know, obviously college, you you had an idea where you were going, ended up someplace you weren't necessarily, you know, maybe not your first choice or whatever, but it worked out. When did you know kind of that the NFL would, would be a possibility for you that, you know, you might be able to take your football career to the next level once you were in college? Well, you know me, I'm a, I'm a big – I'm a big confident person, and you know, I talk a lot of trash and stuff. So that you know, when I got to college, I was always telling people, you know, my ultimate goal was to go. And you know, it's funny. You look back now, you know, a lot of people laughed at me and were like, "Nah, you ain't gonna make it. You're not good enough for the NFL." And you know, now I'm in here, going on my tenth year, and you know, I'm very blessed. You know, so that's one thing I use the motivation: proving dollars wrong. I've been doing that my whole career, my whole life. Uh, I proved a lot of dollars wrong. I think that's that's what my motivation that makes me, um, you know play hard and 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 try to just try to prove all the doubters wrong now another thing so coming out of college brief stint with the minnesota vikings right yeah i was um i signed with the minnesota because the bad thing is i got out of college i got hurt um in the in the hula bowl all-star game Um, first play of the game i tore my mcl and i continued to play and you know i didn't play that well because of course my mcl was torn but went to the combine hurt you know fell from you know, top ten, and I mentioned it all. You know, on the draft board, and everything works out for a reason, though, man. I just tell people all the time, I'm blessed. Everything works out for a reason. You know, start off in Minnesota, learned a lot of valuable lessons there because I, I was with an older group, mm-hmm. and uh, that didn't work out. You know, they put me on practice squad, and luckily, you know, Tampa picked me up, and it was a wrap after that. Right, and not just you know getting to Tampa, but eight whole years there, got some Pro Bowl seasons in there. Um, and I'm sure probably a lot of fond memories of, of your time uh, with the Bucks as well. Oh, yeah, man. I'm always going to be a Buck, man. I tell people all that all, all, that all the time. I'm not going to play eight more years, you know. And I did eight years in um, Tampa. It's a long time. And I will always forever be grateful to Tampa and to their fans and everything. And I, I tell people all the time, you know, I'm a Raider right now. But, you know, Buck, Buck's always in me. I'm always going to be a Buck, man. I did a lot of great things there. You know, I wish I would have finished my career there. But... Like I said, everything happens for a reason. I grew up a Raider fan, and I'm playing for the team I grew up cheering for. And, you know, wanting to ask you about that, NFL careers don't always last so long. Like you said, you feel blessed to be in your 10th year. Did you think that you were going to retire, uh, you know, as a Buck? Oh, I definitely thought that. I mean, that was that was my goal and my plan was to retire a Buck. Um, you know, I made it through, you know, four different coaching staffs 
um, there in this last one. You know, I guess they they didn't want Donald, you know, so I'm glad the Raiders did. Um, But I really did think I was going to retire a buck, and that was the plan. But, you know, now the plan is to retire a Raider. Now, it seems to be a theme. It it seems like when people don't want Donald or when things don't work out for Donald, Donald's got a way of uh, landing on his feet one way or another. College, pros. Uh, That's what I tell you. That's why it's like it's just crazy. I always tell people, you know, everything happens for a reason, and, you know, me being close to home now, I love being close to home. I'm, um, you know, I got my son in a great school out here. So, you know, that last year in Tampa, they weren't with me the whole season. So now me going to Oakland, I get to see them a lot more and it, it, everything works out like well. I get to come home sometimes uh, on Mondays if I need to, you know, come chill, get that refreshment, you know, that deep breath, come into my own house and ah, then go back and grind and work. Um, and, you know, I, my biggest goal to, to end, end my career would be, you know, bringing the Raiders back to excellence. And you said growing up you were a Raiders fan. That's who you cheered for. Now you're able to put on the silver and black, be part of that history, be part of that story. Was it uh, any Raider in particular? Or you have like a, a favorite Raider or a favorite game or something that you remember just growing up, uh, you know, cheering for him? I, mean, I was a Charles Woodson fan, Bo Jackson fan, Tim Brown fan, Rich Grannon fan. Uh, you know, when I was playing O-line, I used to watch Lincoln Kennedy a lot because he played the same position as me, you know. I wear I wear his number. Um, you know, a lot of those great Napoleon calls. And I remember playing with him on Madden all the time when I was in college and stuff like that, you know. But remember I, the Snow Bowl with Tom Brady and that whole thing? Man, I was a, it's crazy because I played for Tampa, and I was cheering for the Raiders when the Raiders played against Tampa in the Super Bowl, you know. I was at, I remember I remember that. We had a little party at the house. All the guys came over. Everybody in there, Raider fan, we had one Tampa fan. I'm cheering for the Raiders, and I ended up playing for Tampa. You know, it's just crazy how things work out. Work, work out. Right, right, got it. And uh, like you said, one thing I did want to ask you, specifically about your position, like you said, being on the O-line, you watching Lincoln Kennedy grow up. I've been been following my man on Twitter for a while, and it, you know, it was a real interesting tweet. Somebody said, you know, when Mother's Day passed, that your offensive lineman can be a lot like your mom. They do the dirty work. They don't necessarily get a lot of the credit, but if you don't have a good one, you know, g- good luck to you having any kind of success. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. Uh, you know, that quote that morning when I was rolling through. I thought it like it fit perfect. Like it, it fit perfect, and I, I feel it really do. Think it's true. You know, mother does a lot of stuff and a lot of work that doesn't get recognized. And just like the old lineman, I mean, we grind, we grind, we grind. But at the end of the day, you know, what's just football? I'm not mad at it. But at the end of the day, they talk about the quarterback, the receiver, the running back, the people who score a touchdown. And that doesn't all happen unless you have that, that, that group that's that's cohesive. And, you know, your mom does all the dirty work and does a lot of stuff that people don't see in the light that helps you. I know my mom did a lot of it, you know, that a lot of people don't know. I wouldn't be where I was without her. I'm thinking you guys, you know, locker room, you've been playing, you've been busting your butt all game, protecting the quarterback, making holes for the running back to do their thing. And as soon as they open it up, the reporters come in, Maybe kind of push past you, you know. They want to get to the quarterbacks and the running back. You guys, I mean, you got to tease them every now and then as the O line. Oh, I tease them all the time. That's how I am. They know. I mean, I'm always, I'm always in cars here, giving them a hard time. I mean, he knows me. I, they love it, and I'm always giving people a hard time. And I, I, I like it back. You know, it makes it fun. You know, that's how it is. Locker room's fun. You know, and yeah, understand. Like every group in Tampa and out here, and even in Minnesota. The line's been, like, the funniest and, like, close-knit group. You know, we keep the locker room going, especially in Oakland. You know, we got, uh, like, Khalif Barnes, he's a he's a, a character. You know, we just go back and forth and keep it fun and keep it light. Now, going with that, O-lines, not just in Oakland, but like you said, around the league, also have a reputation as being some of the biggest pranksters that you'll find in anybody's locker room. Would you say that's the case now in Oakland? Well, we I wouldn't say so much as pranksters, but I feel like you got to have – tough skin to be on our team or to be around us because we joke around a lot you know we talk about each other all day you know back and forth we go back and forth with each other and it makes it fun like we're constantly bagging on each other now if there was a prankster in Oakland though who would you say is the first person you'd have to look out for or watch your car watch your your personals around because something might happen I don't don't have to worry about that I'm a vet you know they know better (laughs) but um (laughs) uh if anything I have to say Khalif man Khalif Khalif Barnes he's He's a character. I told him like when he uh when he retires, he's going in the Hall of Fame first ballot as the best uh, jokester uh, <laughs> ever. Okay, so maybe not you, but maybe you know the the rookies coming in might want to might want to make sure they get on his good side real quick. 
get on his good side. I mean, he's still gonna let you have it though. He don't, he doesn't hold bars for anybody. He even talks about the coaches in their face. You know, like bags on them. But it's all fun. I mean, it makes it fun, makes it light, it makes you makes it fun to go to work. You know. One last question. We're gonna take a little break before we go on to the next. But asking especially about that quarterback. Uh, you know, because regardless of the O line. Whatever team, whatever the offensive scheme is, you need the quarterback to lead. Whether you got a rookie or whether you got, you know, a 12, 15 year vet back there. So as far as you guys now, you know, D Carr's kind of calling the shots, running the show. You know, how have you felt he's changed things, and, and what do you look forward to him with next year? I mean, I just watched his growth from last year. I mean, Derek Carr was a rookie, but I I couldn't tell he was a rookie last year at all. You know, I always reminded him he was a rookie though, because that's just me, but. The way he handled himself, the way he carried himself, the way he took control of everything, his leadership, you know, he, he didn't handle it like a rookie. You know, I played with a, I played with Josh Freeman as a rookie. I played with Mike Glennon as a rookie. You know, I played with a couple of rookie quarterbacks. And, you know, jo- I mean, um, Derek Carr is by far, you know, he, he, he's superb. And um, I'm just looking forward to his growth. Uh, he's been in, learned his new offense. I'm excited about this new offense. It's going to give him a lot more freedom. But, you know, I'm just ready to see his growth from last year to this year because he – he grew a lot last year, and he, he did a great job last year. I couldn't ask for anything more. You know, he's he's going to be a great quarterback um, from time to, time to come, and he's going to keep building. He's a hard worker. I really do I really do have a lot of respect for Carr, and I, I really love blocking for him. Well, good to hear that, and I'm sure he's glad to hear that too, knowing you, you got his back <laughs> that way. Always, always got his back. He, he knows that. Got it, got it. All right, everybody, back here at Sports Recall, sitting with Donald Penn of the Oakland Raiders. Now, haven't been a Raider for too long, but like you said, happy to be playing for the team you grew up cheering for. What do you think, you know, and definitely got to give a shout-out to Raider Nation, um, because if you don't, they're going to let you know about it. (laughs) I love Raider Nation. Right, right, got to. What do you think Raider Nation, the rest of Raider fans, can look forward to watching the Silver and Black this season? I mean, we got a new vibe, um, new feeling in the building. Um, everybody's out here, you know, working hard um, during the offseason. Uh, as an offensive side, you know, our offense is going to be very exciting, very, very exciting. I'm not going to give you too much, but just know our offense is going to be very exciting. Uh, you know, we're bringing a new scheme, and, you know, Carr loves it. I love it. You know, I'm learning it, studying it every day. But our offense is going to be very explosive this year. And, um, you know, defense is doing their thing. Thought, thought they did a great job in the draft again this year like they did last year. You know, brought in some good young guys. I can't wait to see them this week when we start OTAs. And I'm really looking forward to the change. You could you could feel a different feeling in the building. Okay, so it sounds like not just new players but a new attitude and a, a new energy behind everything. Yeah, new energy, new vibe. Uh, Coach Del Rio is bringing that in there. Um, you know, Coach Del Rio grew up a Raider fan too, so – you know, he's just like me. He, he wants to he wants to bring it back so bad. He wants to return to excellence so bad. And you know, I think the, I think the guys that are here they're fed up with, with with being mediocre, and we're ready to take that next step and take it to the next level. Now, I, I love that you use that word mediocre because when you talk about it, you being a vet, ten years, your college career, and obviously you still got a lot of football left in you. But looking at least up until now, everything you've been able to do, like you said, even without all the people doubting you. What would you say is, is the accomplishment so far you're most proud of, of what you've been able to do in your life, whether it be on the field or off the field? Uh, I mean, if I got to say off the field, you know, being a great dad, being a great husband, you know, uh, being a great family person, uh, raising my family, you know, trying to raise two men, just had a daughter. Uh, I think that's my biggest accomplishment is right there. And then on the field, you know, I got three touchdowns. Offensive linemen don't really do that. Uh, and I started 124 consecutive games. Without missing, um, that's a big accomplishment, especially at my position. Having that longevity. Yeah, you know, I'm real proud of that. Uh, and, um, you know, what will be my fairy tale ending, you know, win the Super Bowl as a Raider. That will be my fairy tale ending. If not doing that, you know, turning this team around, leaving on a good note when I do retire because I only plan on playing about three more years. Okay. Now, you talked about, you know, being a father, having two sons. You know, if they're growing up in sports, not just your sons, but, you know, any of the kids at your camp or – any young folks that you run into, you know, if they they want to be professional athletes themselves, what advice would you give them? I always tell them, you know, you can't do it without school. They're not drafting anybody out of high school. You know, you got to go to college. You know, play, uh, you got to get your education. Uh, that's one thing I'm big on. My mom was an English teacher, and she was big on me. You know, I had I had my – school was hard for me. I'm not going to lie. You know, I almost flunked out of college twice. 
you know, I turned around, I had to get it, get it going. Um, but I always tell, you always try to bring that school in because, you know, one thing nobody can ever take away from me is my college degree. I earned that myself and I got it. And that's one thing, you know, nobody can ever take from me. I always try to instill school and, you know, listen to their parents because if football doesn't work, you got to have something to fall back on. And that's one of my biggest, biggest messages to the kids when I do talk to them. Definitely, yeah. It's never, never a bad time to have that degree. Exactly, exactly. That's one thing, you know, nobody can take from you. And, you know, and I always try to tell them, you, too, you know, when I do talk to kids, you know, you got to respect your parents, respect your respect your elders, you know. Uh, you know, my motto is treat people where I want to be treated. So I try to live that way, and I try to express that to, to other people when I do talk to them. Okay. Now, when you're getting ready for games, is it like a, a routine or a ritual? Are you a superstitious person? You got good luck charms or anything you make sure to do uh, the same way before, you know, each time you, you put on that helmet? I, I, I am a, a little little bit superstitious. A little, little bit like. A little bit like uh, I'm, I'm big in routine. Okay. Okay. I, I try to do the same routine, you know, before the game, night before the game, you know, game day. I try to do the same warm up, you know, same routine, you know, get taped by the same trainer. Every, all throughout the season, and uh, I'm just big on routine. If my routine's off, I try. I gotta psych myself back in. But usually, my, I've been doing it so long, I keep the same routine. You know, my game day routine is routine is the same all the time. I try to keep it the same. Okay, got it. Now, playing football, growing up a Raider fan, but growing up thinking, you know, really wanting to be a, a basketball player. I'm sure you watched a lot of basketball too. Being in the NFL, maybe you got to meet people that you wouldn't have ordinarily got to meet, you know, celebrities, other athletes. Anybody that you haven't met, if you could meet one person, celebrity or not, who would that person be? Uh, you know, if, at first, before this past year, it was Magic. I got, to, I got to meet Magic. So now I have to say, you know, either I would love to meet Kobe, I would love to meet uh, Barack Obama, and I would love to meet uh, Michael Jordan. Okay, the three very successful. Uh, one more, one more. I'm a big Barkley fan. I would love to meet Barkley. You said you you definitely a fan of watching him commentate after the games now, not just playing. Yeah, I met him once at the Lakers game, but it was so fast. I took a quick picture with him. I, I mean, you know, like like meet, actually get up, get to um, sit down, talk to him, and pick their brain. Now, this is some question I want to specifically ask you about Charles Barkley because a lot of people think, like you said, him the athlete he was, the size he was. Oh, he could have played football if he wanted to. Being somebody that played basketball and football, if Charles Barkley really had a mindset to, do you think he could have made it as a football player? Oh, yeah, I think he could have, man. He was a freaking nature, you know, being that size and that small and playing down low with the bigger and taller guys and holding his own. You know, crazy. That, that, that used to be my nickname when I played basketball. They used to call me Baby Barkley. Um, but I definitely think he could have. You know, I think he would have probably been a, a great defensive lineman. Okay, that was, that was going to be my next question. What position, where do you put him on the field? Yeah, I think he would have been a great defensive lineman, maybe a defensive end or, or a D-tackle. I think he would have been been real good at that because he was, he, was, he was moving and, and a good athlete, and he could jump. I mean, he was, he was a specimen. Okay, definitely. Now, something else I want to ask you about because you're talking about your sons and congratulations on your daughter. So much of what the media usually reports, you know, with professional athletes, they're trying to show, oh, you know, they got all these girlfriends and living the playboy lifestyle. But you being a family man, do you feel like you're in the minority or do you feel like it's something that a lot of people just don't talk about? It's just, I mean, that, that's not entertaining to talk about that, you know. It's entertaining to talk about, you know, guys cheating or guys doing that. It's not entertaining to talk about, you know, guys being a family man and I've been in the league 10 years, and majority of the guys are family people and family-oriented or, oriented, uh, guys, you know, but they don't – it doesn't get out there, you know, because that's not what sells. That's not what people want to hear. So they, they instead of, say, you got 60 guys on the squad, they're not going to talk about the 55 doing that. They're going to talk about the other five. Oh, yeah, they're going to talk about the other five that, that's messing up and doing bad, you know. <laughs> that's what everybody wants to hear. I mean, that's just a society these days. And another thing, probably something – any of your teammates got caught up with something else for you to let them know about when they got to come in the locker room after reading about them or seeing them on TV? Oh, I'm definitely going to let them know. They know that, too. They, they they know me. They know how I am. I'm going to let them know. Just like something happens to me, they're going to let me know, you know. That's why I, I make sure nothing happens to me. I stay low-key. Now, speaking of magic and speaking of sports, I know recently you were one of the people actually at the Floyd Mayweather-Manny Pacquiao fight. Yeah, yeah. I took my dad. Uh, it was a great experience, man. Uh I mean, I loved it. it. Was people talk about they didn't really like the fight, but I mean, there it was just real intense. It was it was, it was a good fight to me. Um, I enjoyed myself. I was glad I was able to take my dad, and 
you know, I was glad I was able to get 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 some good seats, and you know, because everything happened like last minute, it, it worked out great. But you know, me and my dad had a great time. I, uh, one of my other teammates was there from Tampa. He brought his dad, so we, we both had we both had a real good time. Now, I'm not going to ask a dollar amount, but I'm sure you spent more on the tickets than people did at home on the pay per view. People spent a hundred dollars on pay per view. A lot of them were angry, but you seem to have a, a great time. <laughs> I did, and uh, you know I'm glad I waited till the last minute to get my tickets because you know the tickets dropped a lot, and I didn't spend as much as people really think I did. <laughs> got it, got it. Now, if you had to describe the the experience of being there, you know, at that fight, the whole atmosphere and everything in in one word, what word would you choose? I mean, it was electric, and uh, seeing my dad smile, seeing how much fun he had, you know, that 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 probably made made my day the ma the most. So really, probably the first big fight experience for for both of you guys. I mean, yeah, my dad the one that got me in the boxing. You know, I used to watch it with him all the time. We used to watch all the big fights, and you know, I told him a long time ago if they ever fought that that we would be there. And I, I'm just happy I was able to make it happen. Definitely, definitely. Last thing I wanted to ask: people are making a a lot of uh, comments, this and that, but I'm hearing a lot of things from people that are not in the game of football. So somebody that actually gets down every Sunday, the whole thing with Tom Brady and deflating the balls. Is it really a big thing, or are they blowing it out of proportion? I don't know, man. I barely touched the ball, so <laughs> I really don't know. Uh, you know you know what they say, if, if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. True. <laughs> but, um, I mean, if he did it, he did it. If not, I don't really think that made a big outcome of the game. They won, and like I said, they ran the ball a lot that game. They didn't pass a lot that game. And my boy LeGarrette ran all over him, so I don't really think the football's had an issue, you know. Um, but I'm glad it came, they came to a head and got it, they got it all squared away and got it fixed because, you know, in football it does need to be a fair game. Got it. Now, last but not least, you, uh, like a lot of other athletes, very active on your social media. I always see you reaching out, you know, uh, talking back with the fans. We went and got on our own Twitter account, got some questions from some people. So... Always got the, the Twitter questions for you, just things that, you know, some of Raider Nation and some Raider fans, some Donald Penn fans out there wondering about. Uh, our first question coming from right here in L.A. Uh, this is from Natalie. Thank you, Natalie, for this. Wants to know, uh, you touched on it a little bit earlier, just how you feel about the additions on offense through the free agency and through the draft. I thought we did good, man. I thought, um, you know. I kind of wanted us to get Cooper, you know, when we were uh, when we were going through that whole thing, and I'm glad we did. And you know, we brought in a young tight end from Miami. I've heard great things about him. I know I got to meet him, but I haven't seen him. That's why I said I'm looking forward to this week to see everybody on the field. Uh, we brought in two two offensive linemen on the offensive side that I really think is going to help us with our depth. And um, and I think we're making strides in the right in the right direction. Um, I think Carr need another weapon, and you know, Cooper's that weapon. And from what I heard. From what he did in the rookie mini camp, I heard he was he was awesome. So can't wait to see him in my own, with my own eyes this week. Got it, got it. Next question we got uh, all the way from Indiana. We got Cruz Pedregon. Uh, and actually, funny because anybody that knows Cruz knows that he's in the uh, funny car driving. So athlete in a different sport wants to know what you think about uh, Coach Del Rio. How's he gonna change the landscape? Because he's definitely got a reputation of being a player's coach. You know, when we first hired him, um, I, you know, I look back at what he did in the past, and I saw what he what he did when he was in Jacksonville, and how he turned Jacksonville around. You know, and made them made them known. So, you know, I'm looking forward to him doing that. Uh, I think one thing that he did great was he brought in a great coaching staff to help support him. You know, you're only as good as your coaches are. You know, in this NFL league, and I thought he brought in a great coaching staff. I'm, I love the mindset he, he's bringing to the Raiders. You know, when we talk, you know, commitment back to excellent. You know, being that tough, physical Raider team. That, that we're known for, he wants to do that. And I'm, I'm really excited. I mean, I can't wait to work with him. Uh, he has a great vibe. I love talking to him. And you know, I think he, he, he was the man um, for the job. And last but not least is from Dave Wilson. You might know for Dave, he writes for Raider Nation Times, but all the way out in England. So you got some fans in other countries too. Um, he says, was it real satisfying for you? Do you feel like you proved the Bucks wrong by having such a good season, you know, starting off in Oakland? Uh yeah, I mean, you know, going come, coming off one of probably one of my supposedly worst seasons ever, um, and coming back with my, uh, you know, this season last year, it was kind of fulfilling, and 
you know, to see what happened with the guy that they brought in and replaced me. He's no longer even on the team now. You know, it kind of makes me, you know, look back and say, you know, you're lost, Raiders gang, and I'm happy. I'm with the team I grew up cheering for, playing closer to home, playing for the Raiders, grew up a Raider fan. Can't ask for more. Got it, definitely. All right, we're taking a quick break. We're going to come back and finish up with Donald Penn of the Oakland Raiders, go through a couple favorites, and let him tell us what he's doing now, everything about the Donald Penn Foundation, always reaching out to the community, and know you're doing some good things there too. So stay tuned. We're going to come right back. All right, everybody, Sports Recall, wrapping things up with Donald Penn. Donald, we do just like a little rapid-fire section here, usually at the end. Want to get some of your favorites. So first thing that comes to mind, thinking about, you know, uh, your your number one choices. Favorite car? Uh, I got to say my Bentley Mousson. Okay, not a bad one to go with there. You you a luxury guy. Uh, I'm a big car guy. I wish I loved something else, man, but I love cars. I grew up loving cars. I used to always have Hot Wheels and stuff like that. I, I love cars. I wish I loved something else. <laughs> got it. Got it. Favorite type of food? Uh, depends. I love gumbo, uh, big pizza and chicken wing guy, you know, when I'm not on my diet. <laughs> got it. Got it. <laughs> Favorite artist? Oh, man, that's a tough one, man. Um, it's always one of the toughest ones, but we got to ask. We got to ask. Because I got to sum it down to one, you know. If I got to say uh, right now, uh, new school, I probably have to go with Kendrick Lamar right now. We'll, we'll we'll get a little more specific. Favorite artist to listen to before games? Oh, that's tough. Um, you know, I put my stuff on random and just let it go. Okay. Favorite artist to listen to after games, after a win, let's say. You know, sometimes when I'm, uh, this is a away game. You know, sometimes I put my uh, my oldies on, put some slow stuff on. You know, uh, R&B, mellow it out. Yeah, relax me. You know. Okay, got it. Got it. Favorite movie? Uh, Forrest Gump. Favorite holiday or favorite time of year? Uh, I love Christmas. Okay. And and obviously any of the kids like you said before coming up through the pro they you going to make them love Christmas too. Yeah, yeah, I love I love I love Christmas. Got it. Favorite type of shoe? Jordan. Okay. Were you were you a collector now or growing up or Oh man, not growing up. I ain't had to. I got I got I got a pair of shoes. I got maybe one or two pairs of shoes a year growing up, but now I have like over like 300 pairs of shoes. I love shoes. Okay, but will you say out of out of those three hundred pairs, your Jordans are are the favorite? They're majority Jordans. <laughs> got it. Majority Jordans. <laughs> got it. Got it. Favorite video game? Uh, we could go new school or old school on this one. Um, I'll say Super Mario Brothers, Two uh, K and Madden. Okay, definitely. And then favorite piece of advice or, or favorite motto, like anything that was inspirational to you? Um, I got a quote. My uncle said. Uh, Life's hard, but I'm going to work harder. And then my motto, I live by, treat people the way I want to be treated. Two two very good pieces of advice there. So last but not least, we know you got, you know, your foundation is called the Pen Pals, correct? Well, it's called Donald Penn Foundation, but we abbreviate the Pen Pals to make it easier because I had like a um, tab, I had a ticket group, so I named it the Pen Pals. But yeah, the foundation's, uh, you know, it started off, started off slow, but um last couple of years, man, it's just been building and building. And, you know, usually everything I do out of my foundation comes out of my pocket. So this is a good event to do this because it will be able to help me out and I'll be able to make it bigger because I'm still going to give the same amount out of my pocket. But what I make here, I'll add on to that. So I'll be able to make it bigger. And especially with the way the camp was last year, we had over 500 people last year. And we're looking to be even more this year, you know, because Raider Nation is strong and, and they come big. So I'm, I'm, I'm loving it because, you know, last time I did my Christmas drive, I took 25 kids shopping. You know, this year I'll probably be able to do more. And we know what your your dream is as far as on the field, getting that Super Bowl as part of the Raiders. What would be your dream as far as, you know, if you could look two, three years in the future, what you'd be doing with your foundation? Uh, maybe doing, doing you know, the back-to-school drive, the camp, Christmas, and doing I'm, – I'm, I did it in Tampa, but we did it as a group, online group. I would love to do get back to doing my Thanksgiving drive again. You know, we did it in Tampa as an all offensive line group. It was like a all line turkey day. I would love to get that going again. You know, doing something for Thanksgiving too. Definitely. Now, if you just want to, you know, before we get out, let people know where they can find you at. You know, social media, websites, etc. Uh, yeah, you can follow me on Twitter at, at dpen70 or on Instagram at dpen72, and uh, you can um, follow my foundation. You know, DonaldPenFoundation dot com on um, on the web, and you know, we post pictures all the time of stuff that I do and upcoming events and 
And that's about it, man. Just come support. Um, I'm pretty laid back on Twitter. Uh, interact sometime when I do have the time. Joke around a lot, but don't take anything serious. Got it, got it. Well, we'll definitely be checking you out, and I hope everybody else out there is checking you out. Donald, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. And uh, You made it easy. I appreciate it. See, I know this is a tough critic, so if he tells me, I'm definitely going to believe that. <laughs> SportsRecall.com, everybody. Thanks to Valley Sports Card and Picture Framing once again for having us. Raider Nation, all the NFL fans out there, thanks for checking in with us.